Hi everyone, it's Holly Homer and um, I'm really excited to be doing a video today. It's been a few weeks and I've missed you <laughs> and part of it is I didn't have anything to say so um, I know that sounds like against all odds that I would actually not say something if I didn't have anything to say but um, that's why this video thing works out really well for me because you actually like I get to talk and you don't actually have to listen. You can either mute it or turn it off. <laughs> I think my husband's a little envious at some points. But today I wanted to talk um, about some additional Facebook things. Um, if you haven't seen my earlier videos, what is wrong? Um, you know, we've been talking about kind of how um, the QuirkyMama.com Facebook page has been growing. And some of the things that we've noticed while um, we've grown and through that growth and then also some interactions with other people. So anyway, um, I wanted to start out with some um, kind of some really strange math ideas that um, I've come across since the Facebook page has been kind of front and center. Oh, and like, yeah, things behind me are, I like shoved everything into a pile and that's why I'm like angled so crazily this way because yeah, you don't even want to look over there, so I'll save you from that, but things are falling down over there. Anyway, I'm going to um, go to a screenshot of our page so we can talk about this for a second. If I can remember how to do this, screen share. All right. <clears throat> so this is... Um, our page. Um, this is on and Kids Activities blog um, Facebook page is actually quirkymama.com. Long story, I'm not going to change it right now because things are going well and who knows what Facebook will do if I change things. So anyway, I want to take you to these two posts. This is um, this happened just a few days ago and I noticed um, that it was really, really crazy because these two posts, that Science for Kids, The Hanger and Balance, and The 12 Pranks for Kids, had both been shown to about 25,000 people. And, um, which, like, that's not totally unusual for our page, um, but the fact that the Science for Kids post had 451 likes at that time and it had been shared 236 times, yet it had been shared 25,000 it had been shown to 25,000 of our fans. Whereas the 12 Pranks for Kids um, had only 63 likes and 79 shares. So one of the things that really stood out to me was what the heck is happening? Why would um, Facebook decide to show um, the 12 Pranks for Kids to only, tw you know, to 25,000 people, um, which is, that makes sense, but then why when I have 451 likes on another post and 236 shares, why is that only being shown to 25,000 people? Like that seems to me like we sh that should get more um, emphasis. So if you go in and if you haven't dived into your um, Facebook analytics, you really should because it's super fun. But anyway, I want to show you why this is because if we go back, hey. If we go back into the analytics, we can see exactly why Facebook made those decisions. And I want to show that to you because it makes more sense. And then you'll know um, a little bit more about what um, to do when you're posting. So um, let's start with the hanger one. <clears throat> so this is the analytics um, for the um, Science for Kids hanger balance. Um, and this is, these are both posts that are on Kids Activities blog, so um, I want to make sure I say that. But um, so here we go. We have 25,000 people right, reached. Um, we have the likes, comments, shares from our page, and then, then these are ones that were generated from the off my page. So 62 people liked it from other people's shares and that kind of stuff. So a total of 517 likes, six um, comments, and 238 shares. Um, so that's a really successful post in my mind. Um, and then we look at the post clicks, 688. Um, 624 of those were photo views, which just meant they clicked on the I had loaded this as a photo, um, and the, the um, URL is actually in the description of the photo. Um, and here we go to what I really think the culprit is, is that we have 64 link clicks. So, um, and this happens a lot um, with single, like Kids Activities Blog, we're not, um, 
you know, reinventing the wheel or curing cancer, a lot of the stuff that we do is really, really simple. So if you look at a picture of it, um, you don't need to click through to find out more information. Like, you could look at that picture and figure out how to make that without clicking through to the post. And that's where I think we're getting um, where we see the, the most difference. So this only has 64 clicks. Let's go into the, um, the screen share of the other one. And here we go. So this one, see, it reached the same amount of people, has a lot less likes, a lot less comments, a lot less shares, but it has a, over a thousand post clicks and 345 of those are to the post. And so that is the absolute reason why this post, even though it look, doesn't look as successful from the outside, is actually a more successful post, not only for um, my Facebook page, but also for my website, because I have 345 people on my site that wouldn't have normally been there. Um, so that's what's so crazy about this, is that any action on a Facebook post um, can create more views or it's being shared to more people. And that's really about the momentum issue that we've been talking about is that once you get on a roll, once Facebook sees that people are interacting with your stuff, then it will let more people interact with your stuff. So um, it's really, really, really something I think about every single time I post anything to Facebook is that how can I make it as easy as possible for people to interact with this post? Because um, not only do I want um, comments and likes and shares, but I want clicks on the photo. I want clicks to the website. So even if it isn't my photo, um, or you know, I'm, I'm, and most of our, um, the majority of what we post on our Facebook page is other people's stuff. So I want to give the, the reader on my Facebook page the most options to clicking. So one of the things I always do is make sure that um, like the description, and I load pretty much everything as a photo and then put a title and then I double um, click and then I put the URL and I double click and then I put a description. And I try to make those descriptions several lines long so that that if it is in a compressed um, situation where maybe you're on mobile or maybe it's not showing, maybe it's rung down your um, stream a little bit so it's not showing you the entire description, is that that read more button is there so that you have to click that read more button to read more. Because that hitting that read more button is going to be, you know, register as a click, as an action that you took on my Facebook page. Um, clicking on it through to the post. So sometimes I may even use like a call to action, like click through to find out more information or, um, or you'll never believe number four in this. Um, because I want to really engage readers in clicking through, not only for the benefit of whoever I'm um, promoting or featuring so that they get more website traffic, but also it does me good on my Facebook page because um, Facebook sees it as an action that one of my fans took. So that is what I want you to really think about consciously is that you want to pick the best and the brightest stuff to promote because that's going to get more attention and then you want to format it in a way that is going to call people to action. Um, it doesn't just have to be likes and shares. As we have proved with our little math lesson this morning. So I put a call out in one of my Facebook groups um, for some questions about Facebook and um, so we're gonna go through these. So Megan who is um, a Google Plus guru <laughs> hey Megan, um, she wants to know how to increase post frequency without dropping reach. It seems like after three posts I can't keep the reach up. Do I hang at three for a while or post more and hope for Facebook to start including some more at some point? Right now I schedule two a day and reshare a popular one from another page. Um, I think that's a really good strategy. Um, the Let's talk first about um, the your scheduling. And um, 
I haven't been over to your page recently, but I do see it frequently. She writes coffee cups and crayons, and I am one of her active <laughs> fans, so I do see a lot of her posts in my feed. Um, but one of the things I might suggest is to take the regularity off of that a little bit um, and maybe mix it up a tad bit and just see what happens. And you might, um, in fact, when we first started um, shaking things up on our page, um, and Rachel um, Miller, who's my blogging partner, was really the kind of the push to actually even approach Facebook because I had kind of given up on it at that time. But what we started to do is really think of the Facebook growth page, you know, growth stage of of your page differently than what you would think of as like another social media share. So for a short period of time, and for us it was probably two months, we didn't even use Facebook to drive traffic back to the website. That was not our primary goal. Our primary goal on Facebook was just to get Facebook interaction, get Facebook likes, get Facebook um, comments, grow our Facebook page. And we didn't care to a certain extent. I mean, I'm always looking at stats on our, the blog, which is the ultimate goal. But for that point, um, Rachel and I have a book coming out in the spring, so we really felt like that our Facebook um, you know, kind of clout was more important than even the traffic um, that we would send back to the site. So we went out and kind of tr treated it a little bit like Pinterest or even stumble upon or um, dig it where we went out and really looked for like the best content out there that we could find, the most shareable content, the stuff that people would be like, um, I have to share that, I've never seen that before. Um, and as bloggers, we're in a really unique position to find a lot of that stuff that the general public don't, can't because we're in the middle of it all the time and we have friends that write it and we know people who post it and we know where good um, Pinterest accounts are and that kind of stuff. So. That was one of the first things I would suggest is maybe go out and um, and you it's kind of twofold because you want to create a fan base that likes your page. So you don't want to like go out and find like crazy stuff that's going to get shared but then has nothing to do with your page because then you've created a bunch of fans that when you start posting your own stuff are going to go, well, what's that? So um, I kind of use the you know, crap, I wish I wrote that test. So like if I'm on Pinterest or if I'm on Google Plus or if I'm on Facebook and I'm like, crap, I wish I wrote that, that is definitely something that I need to share on my page because if it's something that fits my blog so well and it's such a great idea that I like, man, why didn't I think of that first, then that is a definite share. That goes to your page. Your fans are going to love it because you love it, and um, it's better than the crap that's on your blog. So it's kind of like a bonus there that um, you're going to get credit on Facebook for finding these amazing ideas um, when all you really did was wish they were yours. So, um, so I would first do that is I would make sure that whatever you're sharing is stellar and I think you're already doing that with your um, share from another page um, I happen to know that um, you're watching and this is so smart is that you watch other pages that are similar um, to yours and you find out what does really well on them and then you share that and if you have a small page and you go to a larger page where that um, post is doing really really well and you share it from that page to your page um, we've seen a lot of good things happen from that. For some reason, because that post is doing so well, Facebook sends some karma with it to your page. So where your page, if you had posted it like as a photo with a description link and all like that, like your normal things on your own, it would actually get less views or exposure than if you shared it from a larger, more active page. Now, um, my page does not do a lot of shares from other pages and the reason is is we have found it less successful but we had know from you know lots of testimonials that um, when we have something that is going crazy like if all my friends go out and share it on their pages they get some of that crazy um, exposure on their pages too and I really think it has to do with the talking about numbers um, if you see the talking about numbers, and let's, um, I think I have a picture of that here. 
So let's look at that real quick. So here is the top of our um, Facebook page. And you can see um, when I took this, we were at 182,000 likes. Um, but our, num our talking about numbers are going in 141,000. Um, now that's pretty good um, for a page to be um, nearing, you know, be it's like 75 percent of my total fan base is talking about me. Um, now there's other pages which I covet, which would be like the Happy Wives Club, who have like I don't know. She's probably up to a million followers now, but her talking about numbers will be two million plus on a good week, which is insanity. I'm not even sure how she does that. I like stalked her at a conference recently <laughs> to find out, but. Um, but for some reason, those talking about numbers are really, really important in the shares. So if I can find a page um, that is applicable to me, um, and like for me, that might be Teach Preschool or, um, or some of the other really big um, Facebook pages that are really, really active um, with a high talking about number, then when I share from their page, it does the same. It sends me some karma with it. Um, and let me talk for just a minute because this is another question that I got asked um, outside of this is if I share, if I post something and then you share it, um, you are not going to um, see very many shares on your, um, on your post on your page. Um, Facebook seems to like attribute all those shares that you may have generated back to the original photo because you're actually sharing a photo so that photo is traveling to your Facebook page and so all those shares are from that photo. Um, so one of the things I do is like if I do share from somebody else I will kind of take a mental note at what the number of shares were before I share it and then I can go back and see like how many I might have generated. I also think you can go into your analytics and pull that out specifically. Um, I haven't really dug in that deeply. But it is a question because um, like if I'm normally getting 100 or 200 shares on every post and then I pull something in from someone else's and then I see and sometimes Facebook will be really random and just say one or two shares there and I'm like that's genius. How could it only have one or two shares? It's because um, if you clicked through the photo, you may see that there's an additional 200 shares that you may have generated. Um, so anyway, you can kind of ride, um, ride that wave of popularity by um, strategically sharing um, other people's stuff. Okay, so Christy um, asked me how to kickstart her page reach. And so this is really where we go back to um, finding the best and brightest. And I didn't finish Megan's question, so I'll do that in a second. Because um, if it is just stuff that can't help but be shared, that is the stuff that's going to start reaching out um, and giving you more and more fans. Um, so in Megan's situation and in Christie's situation where they're building their page, um, I'd take the traffic to your website out of it. Um, you might, in fact, I would suggest going back to your blog and finding maybe your top 20 viral posts, like things that did really well on social networks in the past. Pull maybe those out once a day. Um, pull in some just amazing stuff that you wish you wrote. Um, and then sharing some stuff that is amazing and doing well on like pages. Um, with the timing, um, I would play with that a little bit. I would, because there is a momentum. So let's say, and that's one of the reasons why scheduling doesn't always work when you're building a page. Because let's say you post something at six o'clock in the morning that does really well for your page. If you were watching that and you weren't just scheduling it ahead of time, then I would go ahead and post something else amazing at seven or eight or nine to follow up on that because what you do is you for some reason you get a little extra karma for the next post so I would kind of suggest I know this is not a very popular thing to do but we actually did not schedule our Facebook page at all for I think it was maybe two maybe even three months at the very beginning because we needed that ability to jump on and change things and 
if it was a post that completely bombed, I'd delete it because we don't need that ugly karma on our page. And if it did really well, we'd follow it up with something similar. And that's the other thing is once you start seeing, oh, like, oh, like, I've noticed that between 10 and 11 o'clock every day, my fans love to learn about organization. Now, we don't, we need to write more things. So this is a place where I go out and go, crap, I wish I wrote that. Um, but anyway, so every day between 10 and 11, it is very likely that you're going to see an organization type post for the home or for kids or whatever on my Facebook page. So when you start seeing those trends, you can start um, exploiting them and then guess what like that organization post does really really well so oftentimes I will put one of our posts because <laughs> now I'm worried about website traffic but I'll follow it up at 11 o'clock with one of our posts that may have done well in the past so I can ride the wave of that organizational frenzy into something that benefits us um, the other thing that you might think about doing is um, is deleting things that don't do well I, I don't think, you know, this is not, Facebook is not set in stone. You can go in and, and change that. Try something else. If it doesn't do well, delete it. Um, and the other thing is maybe space it out. Um, like if, if, if you just over and over again hit that third post and Facebook will not show it to anybody else, I would change the times completely. Maybe put that third post in the middle of the night, um, you know, and think about what season it is in the middle of the night, like on the other side of the world, um, you know, make it something that would be applicable to people that aren't necessarily on your time zone. And I mean, really, really playing with it is, is what I can recommend because that's how we ended up with, I think we post like 18 times a day now. And, um, and it works for us. Um, and I'm slowly, backing off on that because I'm getting better at choosing things that I know my fans will like, but um, to maintain that reach. All right, so um, Erica says, how do I get more likes? I love that. <laughs> okay, so the secret is you need to generate the first few likes. Like you need to figure out, how, you know, like you email all your friends, <laughs> you like call on every favor, all your blogging friends, they all need to like your page, okay? And then you may you may run a few contests and that kind of stuff, and I'm not a big contest person, but to get started, you need to build up to a certain amount of, um, to even get exposure at all, and we'll talk about that in another question in a few minutes. So whatever you need to do to get some likes is what you're going to do. And then once you get to a certain level, and for us this was about, I don't know, maybe around the um, 20,000 um, mark. And it's not going to be that way for everybody because you have to remember Facebook is ranking your page against other pages in your um, genre and also like how fast it's growing, how popular it is, how viral things are going. So you may hit that point at 2,000 fans. Um, for us, it was around 20,000, where for every like that we got, Facebook was basically matching those likes by showing us in the other pages bar. And you've seen this when you've been on um, Facebook, where you visit a page and it says, if you like this, you'll also like one of these. Well, um, from what we can tell, and if you look at, and there is a beautiful bar graph um, in, actually, it's not a bar graph, I don't know, it's one of those mountain graphs, whatever those are called, I'm not homeschooling today, um, but in that you can see where your likes were generated, and what you'll find is that when you reach a certain level, like if I generate 500 likes from um, my page or from you know from my blog, then F Facebook's going to meet that with another 500 by showing me in that bar, and that will continue to grow. And that is also something that requires momentum. So once you kind of get on a roll it's like a snowball effect where the more likes you get, the more that Facebook will show you. And um, you'll be surprised at how fast that can grow once you, once you are being seen by more and more people. All right, so the next one is um, how many day, times a day should I be posting? I saw that you post every hour, but between homeschooling, speaking engagements, printable making, ebook writing, and blogging, I can't do it that much. Any advice for a minimal number? Right now I'm about two a day. Thank you for your help. And that's from Jason and Becky Spence. Um, yeah, so um, the pretty much you want to start as you go because once you get to a certain point, um, you can't really back off. 
and um, that's fine. Like I'm on a treadmill that is really an hourly posting on Facebook, and I'm okay with that because it is generating a massive amount of traffic um, to my blog and getting us more likes every day. So for me, it's worth it. But for you, if you are only able to spend five, ten minutes a day, then I would be really strategic about that. Um, and you know, you're gonna, you will not be online to make those snap decisions of adding an extra post or deleting something. So you're gonna have to be really, really cautious about what you choose and make sure it's amazing, and then put them into the number of spots. And I think if you're doing two, I wouldn't I don't think you'd have any problem bumping that up to three or four um, spread out through the day or if you know that one of them is going to do really really well based on your audience then you might um, follow it up within the next 20 minutes, next hour with another post that you think might do well. Um, if you look at other really popular pages, like I've mentioned the Happy Wives Club, um, but Fawn, um, she's very strategic. Like she's a girl that doesn't do something without a strategy behind it. They post, she posts three times a day, um, or she generally was doing that. I don't know what she's doing today, but. Um, and she was doing an early morning one, and then 20 minutes later, her second one, and then one in the evening. And that was through trial and error of what was working best for her audience. And so I would just try it several different ways. Watch your stats, um, you know, after a week or two, try it a different way and see what's working the best for you. But yeah, once you get like involved in this like snowball, you will not be able to stop. Um, <laughs> It just it and then like your homeschooling is going to go out the window. <laughs> okay, Cassie says, "What is the best way to keep people involved? Is it okay to schedule posts? What are the best way to post on Facebook um, without using Facebook?" And um, I'm going to say there is no way because um, from my experience using third-party clients to schedule Facebook, um, Facebook does not like that. You have to remember that Facebook likes Facebook. So um, if you are going to schedule things and it is optimal to be able to do them by hand yourself without a scheduler, but I know not everybody can devote their life to Facebook, so that may not be possible. But that's your number one choice is if you can do that, do that. Number two is to go ahead and schedule them, but schedule them through Facebook. Do not use Hootsuite, do not use Buffer, whatever your third client is. It, for some re reason, in my experience, that has just been a total disaster, and Facebook will show it to like three people. So, um, and then Bernat, Bernadette says, what works best, scheduled post or real-time post, or a mix of both? And I would say um, if you're starting out um, or if you're in that building phase, then you need to do as much real-time posting and hand posting as possible. And that kind of goes back to what Cassie was asking about because you need that interaction. So if somebody like puts a comment on your um, post, you want to go in there and like it and like comment back and get that conversation started. Um, once you get to a certain level where you have a bunch of fans who are already commenting on each post anyway, you can back off of that. That's not, you're going to be spending more time on Facebook because you are going to need to do other things, but luckily that part, your fans will kind of take care of each other. They are going to answer each other's questions and they are going to yell at each other and say ridiculous things to each other. So at certain times you may have to go in and like break up an argument or you could just let it go because remember, every action on your post gets you more views. All right, so Debbie Clement, real basic stuff. What is the etiquette of sharing a post from my fan page feed? Do I tag the person who wrote the post or the person who has shared it? Both. I am completely clueless still. She's not clueless. And don't want to do the wrong thing and therefore do little or nothing that apparently works. Okay, so this is like controversial and I'm sorry, but I'm going to just say it out there because um, in, we all have to be a little bit um, selfish when it comes to our pages. Um, if you are going to tag someone, it kind of works like the shares. If you are tagging a big, robust page with a large talking about number and a huge following, that seems to work. Like you can tag that page and it will not impact your um, the number of um, that your exposure numbers like Facebook seems to like that and they'll show it to as many people as they would otherwise. If you are going to tag a smaller page or one that has low talking about numbers, um, 
it appears that that is a barrier to exposure. So um, I do very little tagging um, and I do very little sharing for that very reason because our page is generally larger than most of the people that we're sharing or featuring. Now, if you want to uh, let that person know that you shared that, um, which is always good because right now we're really talking about interaction, you want as much interaction on that post as possible, is I would go ahead and share that and then tag them in the first um, comment so that that person sees that you shared it and they can come in and comment and you guys can have a conversation about that post in the comments underneath that. But unless that page is huge and that person um, has a bigger page than you, I would leave it off. Now that not, that's not necessarily the best etiquette, but um, in the end, I think it's the best thing for both of you because you are exposing that person's um, work and a link to their blog um, to another audience that they want to reach. Um, so if the more exposure that post gets, the better off it is for them as well. And um, let's see, and that goes back to photos. Uh, and you are really, really, really not supposed to share photos um, from other people's blogs unless they have you have permission. Now, um, Pinterest does and Facebook does, but um, you really should have um, a good understanding that if you share a photo from somebody else, um, they may tell you to come take it down. And you can. You can actually, like, if somebody complains, you can take it down. Um, if you want to, like, walk that line, <laughs> which I do occasionally because it just takes too much time sometimes to go out and, um, and ask for everything. And on the other point, like, the way that I'm sharing, which is going to always like link back to the original source and give credit to that person is 99.9% .9 of people do not mind. But every once in a while you'll have someone that says, hey, you're using my photo, can you take it down? And generally those people are photographers um, or people who make money off those photos. So just be really careful. Sometimes the foodies are like that too. So food and photography is always something that you might want to make sure you have an okay before you share that photo as a photo on Facebook. They're not going to care if you do it as a link that auto-populates the photo, but that is going to get you less reach. So you're going to have to really figure out what's going to work best for you. Okay, so Jamie said, what is your system to figure out what worked and what didn't? How did your trial period go um, to figure it all out? Like I said, it was probably about three months that we scheduled things by hand for the most part, unless we were going to be out of town or something like that. And um, at first, we were really, we didn't look at our stats hardly at all, and we just threw out stuff um, that we thought would do well. And then as, and it did, you know, if it did, if it tanked, we deleted it, and then um, we just kept learning and, like, kind of taking mental notes. Um, one of the things that I do, and you're going to laugh because this is like the lowest tech thing ever. But I, this is my Facebook notebook. So every day I have like Friday, March 21, and 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way up to um, 9 p.m. is generally what I do, and then I may put in a later one. And then on the back I have notes about what did well and what did it like. And sometimes I'll say, like, gosh, this got a ton of exposure, or this did really, really well. Um, so anyway, and so here you have my next page and my notes from the next page and so on. And so this has been really, really helpful in me keeping track of what's doing well. Um, and then I've learned where to put our own posts that, so that they do well. Like, I know that a roundup generally does really well at 9 a.m., and it usually, especially if it's a toddler roundup or a preschool roundup, which makes sense because moms are home after dropping older kids off at school. They're, you know, just looking for something to occupy. Um, or if you run a daycare or something, like, you're looking for something to keep kid, kids busy at that time. So those are... So so you'll notice like things at 9 o'clock are usually going to be roundups and they're going to have a star next to them because they're ours, like because that's what we do. Um, although I have thrown one of Jamie's in every once in a while because she writes some really good roundups. And here again, it does me good by pu publishing things that do really, really well. So that's kind of, I would really, um, and then what I also do is then, um, 
is I go back and see what did well like a month ago or two months ago um, in my book or um, on Facebook because the lifespan of a post, a normal post on Facebook is about 24 hours. If it goes viral, it could it could hang out for a, up to five days, but that's like a super viral post. I mean, like that's like you know, like you know, life stopping traffic. Um, so you are okay to post something again, like probably in a week. I mean, or a few days. And we do that with like another photo in the same post. You know, we may do that the next day or later in the same day. Don't tell all my secrets. But um, so that's one way to do it. Um, but the other way is to go back and see, like a month ago um, at 7 p.m., what did really, really well. Like let's let's repost that. Um, you know, you know, make sure that you're exploiting, you know, your knowledge um, to get some more time. All right, so Heather, um, Heather says this article was shared in one of my other blogging groups, and she's um, talking about the Time Magazine or Time.com um, that was um, how the Facebook free gravy train is over. Um, I think this is fascinating because according to Facebook itself, um, they're saying that pages are only getting about a 16% reach. And I believe that. Um, even though the majority of my posts go out to um, probably at least a third of my, um, I'm probably getting on average 33% and I'm getting at least two posts a day that are going over 100% of my fan base. Um, so we're reaching more than that, more than 16% and this is why. This is my theory why nobody from Facebook is going to say yes or no to this um, or anywhere else. And the thing is about Facebook gurus right now is they are not running pages. <laughs> they don't know what's going on in the trenches. I think it's really, really important to, to look at what's happening in your trench um, on Facebook. So 16%, I totally believe because what happens, and we see it over and over again with hour after hour on our Facebook page, is is there is a search party like you put post a post and Facebook sends you a search party of maybe like I don't even think it's sixteen percent of your fans but a small amount of your fans um get to sample that post like and based on their reactions of this little um, search party determines if that post is going to be seen by more people. So I believe, to a certain extent, anything over 16% of your um, your <laughs> exposure is is can almost be called viral to yourself because that six that over 16% was caused because of a positive experience with the first little sample group that um, what that saw your content. That's why it's super important, the timing of these um, posts. That's, I think, one of the reasons why if you have a really popular post, following it up while some people are still feeling good about your page, you know, will give you another like or another interaction or click on the link. Um, all these things will help you break out of that 16% um, you know, exposure that Facebook is saying that they're showing now, although they're saying they're ratcheting back. Now this time.com um, article said that Facebook said that would be down to 1% by the end of the year. Um, I think we can go back and relate this to paid at, like if you've ever boosted a post or paid to boost a post on Facebook, you have a feeling of what is to come. And um, because I always say like don't boost something that's not already viral or doing really well because you are going to be paying for each view and each interaction. Whereas if you choose to boost something, I would boost something that's doing incredibly well on your Facebook page because what will happen is you will reach those people, they are going to share it and do, you know, and, and then you're going to get a whole bunch of secondary um, exposure based on those paid things. And I think that's what we're really looking at is down the road is that search party is going to get smaller and it's going to be really, really even more important 
that that search party is larger. Like that's I think that's why numbers are so important on your Facebook page because you want that search party. Like one percent of a hundred is a lot less than one percent of two hundred thousand. Like you're going to have a much better chance of getting that, um, you know, breaking out of that that what Facebook originally shows things to. So it's just something to think about. Um, and I have always said, you know, you are playing in Facebook's sandbox. Like this is, I swear, this is like um, gambling. Like every day, I'm gambling on Facebook, and I happen to be. A poker player, so it doesn't bother me so much because um, I'm playing the game and I'm beating the game right now. But Facebook is dealing the cards, and they can deal super crappy cards in the future. And that's why I don't know that you want to like devote your life to Facebook um, if you have no other things going for you. Um, I, you know, Facebook is not is well, I guess right now is probably our largest refer source to um, kids activities blog. But we still are working on Pinterest and search engine and Google Plus and um, you know not so much Twitter. <laughs> but but I mean like this is not all our eggs are not in this basket. Um, if Facebook goes away tomorrow or cuts me back to one percent, it's not like I won't cry. But we have you know it, it, we are working on this with the knowledge that. We don't know what tomorrow holds, so I think like you know, for those of you who are devoting a lot of time starting out, like that's just something to think about. You don't want to get yourself into a situation where you're like sent to a Facebook depression, <laughs> which could totally happen. So, um, all right. So Lizette says, engagement question tips. I respond to a reader comments on photos and posts and can get a conversation going, but on my regular um, post, that it's met with crickets. And I think this has to do with the numbers. Um, I really do, because early on we could only get kind of comments um, when we asked a direct question. And when you ask a direct question, ask something easy and like something super easy, like where are you from, or how old are your kids, or like depending on what your genre is. But if you like, I mean, I used to ask questions like, "What are you making for dinner?" Like that's a hard question. I don't even know what I'm making for dinner. Or like more when you say, like, what what did you wish somebody else made you for dinner? Something like something that's fun and like people can't even stop themselves from answering. Um, on the um, regular posts, number one um, that can always get you some interaction is controversy. And like kids activities blog, we're about as controversial as toast. Except on Facebook, and um, it is shocking how controversial we are on Facebook, and it's because people are very passionate and will tell you exactly what they think on Facebook. So um, we first noticed this with like we um, popcorn, um, popcorn super controversial. I guess like um, you know people pretty much think you're killing children when you put a popcorn recipe, and they'll tell you so. So all of a sudden, like you'll go. You know, if you post something semi-controversial, and you want to make sure that's within your genre and not against your brand, like I would not like put up like, do you spank your kids? Because that's not our brand. But like putting up something that has artificial food coloring is super controversial. I know that sounds crazy, but like people are so passionate about that, and we will get 50 comments of a whole bunch of people jumping on the pro and con bandwagon. Um, and so, if you're aware of that, use it to your benefit. Like, if you need your talking about numbers up, like if you haven't posted anything, you know, like walk the line, you know, go get a little crazy, put a coloring page. Coloring pages are controversial. I know you don't know these things, but you'll know once you start growing your Facebook page. <laughs> All right, so. Um, I'm going to keep looking here. Um, I think I have just one more question. Oh, okay. Um, Jody said, um, I've noticed that when you have been sharing, that you haven't been sharing everyone else's Facebook posts, but rather creating a new post, which includes a link and uploading a picture. Do you have to get permission to upload a picture from the blogger? Is it okay to up upload the upload the picture without permission with proper link of course is it helping to reach that way and so yes 
And um, in general, like a lot of people are coming to our Facebook page and sharing their activities, which I love, and because that's super helpful to them. Because some of my fans are going to see that, whether I see it or not, because it's going to be in my sidebar. But also, every day I check that, and I pull stuff from that stuff every day. But I know my fans, and I know sometimes the photo that you shared with me is not the photo that's going to resonate the best with my fans. So I'm going to go to your post, I'm going to read through it, make sure I still love it, and I'm going to choose the photo that's the best for my fans. Now if that makes you upset or uncomfortable, then do not post things to my Facebook page. Um, and I'm totally cool with that. Like I can understand you don't want me choosing um, a photo from your book. But if you are going to write, you know, if you're going to write me and tell me to take the photo down, I totally will. But I'm going to send you a boatload of traffic. So like, it's really up to you what you want to do. Um, but I kind of look at when you post, you post to my Facebook page or if you sign up on one of my linkies, it's giving me permission to use a photo with a link. And I would never use that photo without a link because it is my goal to send you as much traffic as possible because the, every single one of those clicks helps my page get seen by more people. So. I would, you know, if you are nervous about that or, um, and I will tell you from ex personal experience of having someone else, um, a, a huge page online that steals my stuff on a regular basis. They steal our photos, and I know many of you know who this is, um, they steal our photos, do not put a link, which is stupid. They would totally get way more reach if they put those links in there, but they don't. They steal the photos, they, like, if it's a recipe, they'll put the whole recipe in there. Well, I've reported the same page to Facebook. Um, I think it's five times now, and every time I'm like, Facebook, this is the fourth time I've done this. Facebook, not this is the fifth time. I've done All Facebook does is tell them to take it down. So um, that's why it's made me a little bit less nervous about that situation, because I would totally take it down, and I'm totally going to give you credit. I'm not going to be a crappy person like that person is. But um, anyway, so... Um, okay, we have two more questions. Um, Shannon... Oh, my friend Shannon. Um, she wants to know if you think Facebook is still worth the lion's share of my time um, or if its influence is less than other um, platforms. I really, I totally would have given you a different, um, it really has to do with your, your audience and where your audience is. Um, I think those of us who work, you know, in that mom space and appeal to like in our instance, grandmas who have kids that are taking care of kids, caretakers who are taking care of kids, and moms who have kids. Um, they're still on Facebook. I mean, yes, they're on Pinterest, um, and Pinterest is, you know, I certainly wouldn't say do Facebook instead of Pinterest. I think you need to be both places if you're appealing to moms and you have a visual blog. But um, I know everybody's, you know, down on Facebook, but until you have a post go viral on Facebook, you do not know what viral means. I mean, we had some viral pins that sent us hundreds of thousands of um, you know, page views in the early days of Pinterest, but I had a post that got a million hits from Facebook um, over a week. So, like, and that wasn't from my page, don't get me wrong, but that, you know, the Facebook is still alive and well and generating serious traffic. Um, and so I don't think you can just discount it um, unless you want to. I mean, like, if you don't want to spend the time, I totally understand. Like, you have, you have other things to do. But if you are really wanting to be everywhere that you can be to send yourself traffic and to set yourself up with influence, I think you still have to do Facebook. Um, just like I'd say you have to do Google Plus and just like you have to do Pinterest. So... Um, and it is totally cool to just choose two of those or one of those and really, you know, be an expert in that. Um, so that may, you know, that may not be Facebook for you, but um, it does. It is like I said, it's like gambling. You will spend a lot of time, and hopefully, it will pay off. Um, and I can't say it will 100% of the time, but you have some good strategies. Like you know, you have a lot of people around you that are doing well on Facebook. Um, all right, so Jody, and I'm going to end with this question because I love it. Um, it says, Holly, scrolling through your Facebook page is almost scrolling like through a Pinterest feed. I love it. And I know that's not really a question, but I love to end on that. And that's really, I want to say I love that question so much because that is what we're trying to achieve here. Is 
Yes, a lot of those moms are on Pinterest, um, but a lot of them just want to be on Facebook and they want all that amazing content that um, you would find on Pinterest brought to them in their stream on Facebook. And one of the reasons, and, and this goes back to Shannon's question, one of the reasons why I love um, our Facebook fans so much is I will post something to Facebook and first of all, like it's instant gratification, like people like jump over there to our blog post immediately to read it. But then if you like hop over to Pinterest like five minutes later and open up your source code, you will see a ton of pins of that post. And I, that's what makes Facebook so special um, as a social media network because on Pinterest, if I pin something and it goes crazy, I don't see a whole bunch of Facebook posts of that pin. But on Facebook, when a Facebook post goes crazy, those people go over, those readers go over, and then they put pin it. So not only have I seen my Facebook traffic numbers go up, but my Pinterest numbers have gone up because because they are sharing that content not only on Facebook but on Pinterest. So, so anyway, I think it's kind of a good strategy to pull together a stream that would feel like a Pinterest stream to your reader. And that may not be every hour like it is for me, but I want you to experiment with it because I was shocked at how like we kept pushing it the the frequency and pushing the frequency and pushing the frequency. And I really truly believe for my fan right now I couldn't overpost. I just am worn out at 18 a day. So that's where we're sticking right now. But but if you're always where you get into trouble is when you start giving them things that they don't want or they don't expect. And so I think as long as you're staying true to your brand and giving them amazing things that they wouldn't have found on their own, then you're doing them a service and you're going to grow. I mean, that's just the bottom line is once you hit a point where Facebook's going to start taking notice, you're going to grow. All right, so I'm really sorry about talking forever <laughs> about that, but um, I really appreciate all your questions. If you want have other questions, please leave them on this video, and I will answer them next time because I won't have anything to talk about unless you leave a question. So, and hey, stop by my Facebook page and share something that's popular, okay? <laughs> Thanks so much.